So Dave, is there a particular fallacy that really grates on your nerves, kind of like the fingernails on chalkboard fallacy? Hmm. What is your pet fallacy? I think it's just misrepresenting people. So it would be the first one, the um, the straw man. I th I think it's it's incredibly dishonest. Um, to just to you know, even if I am refuting a position, or actually, especially if I'm refuting a position, I have to get that position right. You know, I I, I just there's there's a fundamental. If you don't mind, would you would you break Grating, down for, well. for those not everybody's into the debating and all that stuff about fallacies? But could sure. you could you elaborate on what a straw man is for our, our audience, please? A straw man fallacy. Uh, I actually have no idea what it is. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, straw man is basically misrepresenting somebody's argument to the point where you make them try and sound ridiculous, and they're, you're ridiculing them basically. So, if somebody came forward and said evolution is giving um, birth to you know yeah chimps are giving birth to humans you know that's such a, a ridiculous argument and I, I give this example on the first page in the first fallacy okay. where if if we came forward and said to, to christians that uh they believe humans came from talking snakes that's just as equally misrepresenting them and so uh we we, we really have to keep our integrity and our dignity and and represent people's arguments properly so when you watch either what might be the jordan peterson sam harris stage sit down um debate yes. they <laughs> i know right they at least agreed to, to attempt to still man so to still man is to, to do the opposite is to strengthen each other's argument and i saw uh rationality rules and stefan molyneux do the same uh, much to their credit even though i, I completely profoundly disagree with Molyneux, right. uh, but I'll, I'll be speaking to Rationality Rules on the 4th, on Thursday, on the podcast, just after Andy tomorrow. Excellent. <laughs> Sorry, I was addressing the crowd real quick. Um, yeah. Now, of these fallacies, so you've got the straw man fallacy. Can you give me a couple of others? Throw out a couple of others, or well, I mean, without spoiling your book, yeah. obviously, as short as it may be. <laughs> <laughs> there's 50, it's, it's fine. So, there's um, there's things like um, ad hominem, which is um, a, personally attacking somebody, so saying that uh, uh, Chris is uh, wrong because he's, he's wearing glasses, and people who wear glasses can't see very well, and therefore. You know they, they they're stupid and therefore you know i could go off on a, a bit of a, a tangent and obviously this is all complete nonsense um right. please keep me on your channel uh, but, <laughs> but yeah no, no, so no, no. Well, you know, i mean I, I'm not, I wouldn't be a very good debater because of the ad hominem I, they would be like there's no proof of creation i'm like it's in museums everywhere and they're like that's not real proof and i'll be like you're stupid you're stupid and your dog is stupid and then see i lose <laughs> Well, that's the thing about ad hominems, yeah. right? You're attacking the person right. and not addressing the argument. Yes. yes. And that's yeah. why I would lose. I would state yeah. both the argument and the person are stupid. But carry on, Dave. <laughs> yeah. So this is an interesting nuance that I had enough space for in the book. This is, again, we could still have a reasonable discussion as to whether that even counts as an ad hominem because just calling somebody stupid isn't an ad hominem. It's it's saying you're wrong because you're stupid. Okay. And it's it's you're saying it's the fundamental reason that they are wrong, whereas. So just it, calling it, them names more... doesn't apply. That's awesome. So I can call them I, stupid. I still think it's. <laughs> it, <okay. laughs> Win for me. <laughs> <laughs> I still obviously would not recommend it, uh, as it doesn't build rapport <laughs> with. Okay. The, your, your particular interlocker okay. uh, but uh, you do you <laughs> <laughs> and them apparently <laughs> hmm. hey, so I heard you talk about Rappaport's rules before you want to give a quick review of those sure um, so I'll do it from memory rather than reading from the book so Rappaport's rules um, incredibly tricky to keep to in a conversation but if you want to gain respect and have your criticisms accepted by the other person it 
tends uh, it's better to follow Rappaport's rules than what we're currently doing. So what we're currently doing is just coming forward and saying criticism, and then people see zero commonality with you and this much criticism. And the more you criticize, it just builds a wall between you and your your partner. So in terms of trying to uh, break down that wall, Rappaport's rules puts forward three rules before you're allowed to criticize somebody. One, you have to state their position accurately. So a steel man, um, preferably trying to word it in such a way that they turn around and say, oh, I didn't think of it like that. And, and you've actually strengthened their, their argument and you've made their, their argument, argument better. Um, and I've had some wonderful conversations with people who have done that to my own argument as well. So secondly, state where you agree with them. And that that's always great for building a foundation upon having another conversation and making sure that we have this rapport, or this, this commonality. And then thirdly, it's very, very difficult. It state where you, uh, uh, what you've learned from that other person. So if, if somebody, um, comes forward and says, um, did you know about this certain passage of the Bible? I was like, Oh no, I, I, I didn't, I had absolutely no idea. Thank you for, you know, let me know. And it, it, we have to think of interactions with people as Venn diagrams. You know, there's a very small amount in the middle where we share knowledge. And then there's other stuff which we, we can share. And so making that overlap bigger has to be appreciated. So once you've done those three things, once you've stated their position accurately, stated where you agree, stated where you've uh, learned anything from them, you then have a solid foundation to criticize somebody else to the point where they will actually respect your criticism. And me and Chris were talking about this um, on, on Twitter because uh, he quite rightly was criticizing a particular podcast that I was doing and it was, it was boring. It was completely boring and I understand and I get it. Um, and Chris's criticism comes from a position of respect because he does exactly the same, <laughs> the same one thing. man producing thing. He's, he's like the, the, the perfect person to be criticizing. Right. So, uh, and then David lit it, me it, up in the chat and he's like, and you do this wrong and you do this wrong and you do this wrong. I'm like, Son of a bitch. I've been, I've been crying yeah. over my fonts all weekend. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Dave called my fonts bad. <laughs> <laughs> 